Now, I've always been one of the first to acknowledge how good Apple's mobile processors are. If you think about the A10, the A11, they really were uh, fantastic processors when Apple released them. And this year, of course, we saw the release of the Apple A12 Bionic, and I thought, well, Apple have done a great job again this year, great improvements in speed and uh, energy efficiency, and well, it'd be interesting to see what they do next year. And then Apple released the iPad Pro with the A12X, and my mind was blown. Hello there, my name is Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Today, I want to look at the A12X and compare it to the Apple A12 that you find in the iPhone XS and to the Kirin 980. And the reason I'm picking those three particular chips is because those are the latest processors available at seven nanometers. And we are expecting more from Qualcomm and Samsung later on, but today on seven nanometers, we have the Kirin 980, the Apple A12 and the Apple A12X. So let's compare them to see how they do. So first of all, let's look at the specifications. Now, as I said, all of these are built on seven nanometers. Now, the Kirin 980 is an octa-core processor. It has two 2.6 gigahertz Cortex-A76 processors for the high-performance cluster. And then another two uh, Cortex-A76 processors also in the high-performance cluster, but with just a slightly lower clock speed at 1.92 gigahertz. And then for the energy efficient cluster, it has four 1.8 gigahertz Cortex A55. Now for the GPU is a 10 core Mali G76. And when we talk about the internal caches, there's 2.5 megabytes of L2 cache that's shared across the various cores, and then four megabytes of L3 cache, which is system wide across the whole uh, processor. And you find the Kirin 980 in devices like the Mate 20, the Mate 20 Pro and so on. Now, Apple, of course, released the A12 in the iPhone XS and XS Max, and that's a hexa-core processor. So at the higher performance cores, there are two 2.5 gigahertz Vortex cores, and then for the energy efficiency cores, there are four 1.5 gigahertz Tempest cores. And then the GPU is a four-core GPU designed by Apple itself in-house. And for the caching, there's eight megabytes of L2 cache, and of course, we find this in the iPhone XS and the iPhone XS Max. Now, after that, Apple released the iPad Pro 2018 model, and that contains the Apple A12X. So it's a variant of the Apple A12, and the big difference here, it's now an octa-core processor rather than a hexa-core processor. So you have four 2.5 gigahertz Vortex cores, then four Tempest cores, probably also clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. You have a bump in the GPU there from a four core design to a seven core design, and then the rest stays the same with that uh, eight megabytes of L2 cache. So clearly the A12X is the big brother of A12. You've got two more CPU cores and three more GPU cores. Now you might be asking yourself the question, well, why didn't Apple put that processor in the iPhone 10? And the simple answer is battery life. It's obviously a much more hungry device. There is a direct relationship between the amount of power that a processor draws and kind of its performance level, which is why on PCs it's connected to a mains, you have a big cooling fan on it and so on. But of course in mobile devices, no cooling fan, no mains electricity, we're running off battery and we need the heat to be able to dissipate through the device without kind of, you know, heating up our hands. So obviously the iPad Pro is a much, much bigger device. You can get a much bigger battery in there. And also there's a greater surface area for heat dissipation. So taking those into account, Apple have been able to bump up the performance and the specifications of the A12, creating the A12X, which we find only in iPad devices at the moment. So let's start here with the Geekbench single score. The Kirin 980 scores 3,378, a very respectable score. However, it is bettered by the Apple A12 with 4,814. So the single uh, core performance of the Apple A12 is greater than the Kirin 980. And actually we did really uh, expect that. Now, before we look at the results for the single core score for the Apple A12X, I would just like to point out that I did do a whole video looking at the A12 versus the competition when the A12 was first announced, and I estimated the speed, the performance numbers for the A12 and the Kirin 980, and you'll actually notice I was pretty spot on there. 
A uh, few people in the comments were like, oh, you're just talking about your guesses and your estimations. Well, they were right. And here we go, the score for the A12X uh, under Geekbench single score is 5,012 just a tiny bit higher than the uh, A12. That means that um, maybe there's a slightly higher clock frequency that we haven't found out about yet. Maybe they've done some tweaking internally to kind of better lay out some of those internal data paths, those internal layout of all those transistors, and they've just been able to squeeze out a bit more of a higher score. So let's go on to Geekbench uh, Multi-Score. Now, of course, the uh, Kirin 980 was an octa-core processor and it scored 10,024. And the Apple A12 is a hexacore processor and it scored 11,405. So you can see that the A12 was able to produce a better score than the Kirin 980, even though it was a hexacore and the Kirin 980 was an octacore. Let's go on to the uh, A12X. Now, of course, this is an octacore setup and look at this an absolutely amazing score of 18,720, blowing the A12 out of the water and blowing the 980 out of the water. A fundamental shift here in the multi-core performance of that mobile processor from going from a hexacore to an octa-core setup there. And finally, let's take a look at the Antutu scores. Antutu is interesting because it's a combination of both the CPU and the GPU, and we'll be able to see what the overall kind of performance indicator is for the new A12X. So starting with the Kirin 980, we have a respectable score of 307,693, and it was slightly bested by the A12 in the iPhone uh, 10s with a score of 352,000, 880. So what can the octa-core version of the A12 manage? Well, look at this, 559,580. Again, an absolute massive leap there uh, in the performance. And that performance increase there is clearly because of those two extra high-performance CPU cores and three extra GPU cores. So really taking those, that Antutu score into a whole new realm that we haven't seen before. Okay, so there we have it, the comparison of the currently available seven nanometer mobile processors. The Kirin 980 was unfortunately the weakest of them, but that was to be expected because really Apple are way ahead in the field of mobile processors. You've got the A12, which, the, uh, which was good, but really once you get to the A12X, it really does just smash all of those scores completely. Again, you've got two extra high performance cores going from a hexacore to an octacore and three extra GPU cores, meaning it's a beast when it comes to CPU power and when it comes to GPU power. Okay there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video please do give it a thumbs up. Some people say in the comments, how come you haven't got a million subscribers? Some people even say, why haven't you got 10 million subscribers? Well, you know, really the only way that people get to find out about this channel is when you share about it and when you tell your friends about it. So please do share and like uh, this video because that will really help build up the community here. Also, I'd be interested to hear your comments below about what you think about the A12X and what you think about the iPad Pro. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.